What's happening, people? I hope you're all well. So, Anthony Joshua is going to be fighting Francis Ngannou, and reports suggest that this is going to happen in March, and um, specifically Friday, the 8th of March. And I was kind of wondering myself, like, who Joshua's next opponents are going to be. Uh, on who, who Joshua's next opponent is going to be, rather. And there were some names thrown into the mix. And some of those names were Francis Ngannou, who obviously he turns out to be correct. Um, Philip Hergovic. Daniel Dubois. Uh, and Zili Zhang. Those were the names that I was, I was hearing. I thought Daniel Dubois was unlikely because what does Anthony Joshua gain at this stage for from beating Daniel Dubois or taking the risk of Daniel Dubois? You know, to take that risk, there's got to be a sufficient reward. And I didn't see the sufficient reward with the risk that Daniel Dubois brings. And then you've got Filip Hergovic. For me, that made more sense because I'm hearing that Filip Hergovic, I don't know if he's mandatory or he's going to be made mandatory. I think he actually is mandatory. No, I think he is mandatory and Mark Demora will stay busy. So Filip Hergovic is mandatory for the IBF. And IBF tends to be very strict. Many suspect that the winner of the Usyk Fury um, first fight will get stripped because they've locked themselves into a two-fight deal and therefore they can't defend against their mandatory if they're locked into a two-fight deal so the winner who holds the IBF belt may very well get stripped although I'm a bit skeptical of that because Eddie Hearn I believe lodged uh, the IBF in the past to get a um, extension to allow Joshua to fight Klitschko in a rematch back in the days when it looked like Joshua and Klitschko may rematch, but Klitschko ended up retiring. So I'm not fully convinced that the IBF will just go and strip the winner of the Usyk Fury fight. But anyway, it made sense for me that Joshua was going to fight Hergovic if Hergovic was going to end up fighting for a vacant title. Because there's obviously Hergovic comes with risk, but the sufficient reward of regaining the IBF would have made it sufficiently worth the risk then you've got Francis Ngannou well I'm gonna I'm gonna go next to Zhili Zhang so I heard Zhili Zhang was also in the running and I believe he called Anthony Joshua out and that for me again I believe Zhili Zhang holds a um, intercontinental title or something like that and so for me that really wasn't worth the risk because Zhili Zhang is a fighter that looks to be having an Indian summer. Um, he hits hard, he's dangerous, especially early on. So for me, that didn't really make sense because you're going to fight someone dangerous for an intercontinental title that doesn't even guarantee you a shot. You're not even fighting for a regular title, you're fighting for an intercontinental title. So for me, that didn't make sense. But then you've got Francis Ngannou, who, from a ranking standpoint, I don't know where he, I think he actually is in the rankings for the WBC, but from a rankings point of view, it makes no sense whatsoever. But you know, professional boxing is a business, and what makes money makes sense. And financially, does Francis Ngannou make sense? Absolutely. So it goes to this, it goes back to this um, sort of changing era in professional boxing or boxing in general where does it really matter if it's professional boxing these days or if it's misfits boxing does it really matter who the champion is when you could be making millions and you're not even a champion you know these are the new sort of topics and points of discussion and realities of boxing are people doing it for legacy? Are people doing it for money? Are people doing it for a bit of both? I'm sure many fighters would take their legacy if they could get it, but if you could secure your family's future, 
in a non-title fight or you could you could go in there and have a title fight and not make as much money which would you do i know many would do the first one so it goes back to this discussion these days you know Francis Ngannou, that is a crossover fight. As far as I'm concerned, you know, you've got people like Tommy Fury and Jake Paul. You've got KSI and Tommy Fury. You've got all these fighters, you know, they're not coming to mind right now, but you've got all these fighters doing these crossover fights. Tyson Fury, Francis Ngannou. Um, as far as I'm concerned, this is just another one of those. It is. Um, but the financial reward... You know, you secure your family's future twice over. I'm sure Joshua's already secured his family's future. Depending on, you know, because, again, family, you know, when I say family, I think about this sometimes, you know. When you say family, yeah, what family are you talking about? Because the family just gets bigger and bigger and bigger when you, you know, well, where's the line? Where do you draw the line? Because I've got family, like, kind of way out there. And they are family, but when I say family, am I talking about that family when I'm talking about securing my family's financial future, you can't actually provide a financial future for everyone. Um, you know, because the family gets so big and then eventually, you know, we're all related. So, but anyway, I'm kind of doodling off topic here. Um, but, you know, Joshua, you know, maybe like his, you know, his, his sort of side of his family, you know, I'm sure he secured their future. So now it's a case of how many generations do you want to secure? probably but from a financial standpoint this makes total sense Francis Ngannou he's gonna you're gonna bring in loads of money you know Francis Ngannou he's um just had a very good fight against Tyson Fury many think he won many think he won that fight and um his stock rose in a loss he went in there on his pro debut and many would say beat the heavyweight champion consents you know beat the heavyweight champion in many eyes number one you know you got Usyk and Fury but many think Fury is the number one we're going to find out soon um Francis Ngannou went in there dropped him and arguably in many people's eyes won the fight so for Joshua to go and fight him yeah it's financially rewarding but there's also somewhat a bit of credibility there now in my opinion um, does the fact that Francis Ngannou gave Tyson Fury a good fight mean that Tyson Fury, um, that Anthony Joshua is necessarily going to struggle with Francis Ngannou? I wouldn't say that. In my opinion, Francis Ngannou, who would I pick? Fabio Wardley or Francis Ngannou? Um, probably Fabio Wardley. Who would I pick? Solomon Dakers or Francis Ngannou? Probably Solomon Dakers. But these guys ain't making the money that Francis Ngannou is making. So that's why Anthony Joshua is fighting Francis Ngannou. And this is what I'm talking about. So, yeah, it makes sense. But you would, you know, it, it's going to be interesting to see. Will Joshua pursue another title or will he just take the money fights? I don't begrudge someone for just taking the money fights. When I was younger, I was like, yeah, go for this legacy, legacy, legacy. But, you know, rest in peace, Muhammad Ali. When you're in a wheelchair or you can't walk properly or you've got problems, yeah, people might talk about you for 30 seconds. Oh, it's a shame. And then they're just going to get on with their lives. But, so was it really worth chasing that legacy? I can't answer that question because what, what things mean to different people is different. But for me, you, you have to look at it like that. People might say, yeah, he was a brave man. He fought everyone. Yeah, you, you talk about it for 30 seconds and then you carry on with your shopping. You carry on talking to your missus or, you know, you carry on watching the TV. It's like a moment, a passing moment when you remember that. So... Just bear that in mind when you're chasing the legacy. Whereas you chase the money and you retire with your faculty, faculties intact, you know, you get that financial reward and you get to enjoy it. But then some people will chase that legacy because that's what it means to them, you know, and I'm not begrudging that either. You know, we need people to look up to who are just brave because that's where you, you know, you, draw, you can draw energy from them and what they did. So there's, you know, there's a place for both. But anyway, or you could always, you know, find that middle ground, which is often the case in life. Anyway, would you make of the Francis Ngannou fight um, with Anthony Joshua? Who would you pick to win? Let me know. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, hit the notification bell to get a notification when I make a new video, and I'll see you on the next one.